I've noticed the in, the, an increase every time I, I talk to, especially student groups, the number of questions about basic interactions with people has increased. So I will say mentoring, mentoring, mentoring. Like that's my big thing because I think problems will come and go, problems change. But if you have five mentors that are focused around a goal or a big priority in your life, right? Like back to the big three. I'm not joking about this. Like all of this intertwines, right? So you have your big three, you pick one goal, you've got five mentors that'll help you move that goal forward or accomplish a challenge. All right, these could be anybody, but you just imagine what are five areas that would help me. It's like a table and over the year, you just try to fill those slots. Who would I really trust to advise me on one of these five areas? going to help me move this goal forward or accomplish a challenge. So I bring this up. It sounds all great. It's all organized. Okay, great. And then they say, how do I talk to them? How do I ask them to be my mentor? You know, and all these questions would come up. And I, I said, why, why are you concerned about asking somebody, you know, to be your mentor? Well, I'm afraid they'll say no. And what if they do say no? Why are you afraid of that? Well, I'm afraid it means that I'm not good enough or I'm a failure, you know? And why do you think that? Why do you think that you're a failure or it somehow reflects on you versus that person's just kind of busy, you know? Well, I think because I don't have a good, a fabulous sense of my myself and my strengths and I just don't think about it that much, you know? Well, why don't you think about it that much? Well, I'm really busy. You know what I mean? And so, so then it, it just kind of is like, okay, well, let's take a second and sit there. It's like whether it's what I call the pep talk file, saving a lot of things that are positive about yourself that you're filtering. You're using your judgment to filter. You're not making an, an all-out, like, externally generated self-image. Or you're saying, here's something I'm really good at. Or even just focusing on a goal and feeling really good about yourself because you're focusing on the goal and you're taking time to move forward, even if you're just making half an hour each day to do it. These are all different things that can help us, like, you know, people talk about the brand called me, you know, and the brand called me isn't just a resume, you know, it's got to also be inside. And there's lots of books about that kind of stuff, you know, mentoring, um, how to build self-confidence, not a ton of stuff on that for, you know, career-oriented women, but working on developing, you know, a self-image and a good sense of self and carrying that with you. Um, so that it's not like an empty bucket to be filled by whatever naysayer you come across. You know, there is lots of stuff on that. I think this is information. I'm getting towards the end of time. I know people have got questions for it, but number one, and, and we really just focus on what you're doing, and I think what you're doing is so important to us today, but the Hot Mamas Project, you just concluded this year. So it's every year, correct? Mm -hmm. So if people want to find out about the Hot Mamas Project, they go to hotmamas.org. Mm -hmm. And we they can find out. Spellings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we actually never show up in the top of the Google thing. Okay. But when we first started, this porn site used to show up in the top yeah. of the Google. Thing. But one good thing about that is it's definitely not us. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Like, I mean, it's it's not like some other women's leadership project. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> different kinds of leadership. Yeah, um, I don't even. Yeah. So so and now so how many people do submit their their um we've got their case studies um, ninety one this year, um, half of which are international. Wow. And yeah, and it's going to be really, really exciting. So we have different categories that we're adding on each year. Um, we've got financial literacy. We have arts. Uh, we have mentoring, of course. Um, we're going to have sports. Uh, we're going to have STEM, science, tech, engineering, and math. And actually, do you know that our STEM winner last year is somebody that wrote for us because of a success in the city event? Really? I love that. Yep. I love that. Yeah, I was here for the Helen Thomas event, and I met somebody who said, oh, you've got to talk to this woman who's putting through her own clinical, like going through her own clinical trials, um, trying to put a new cancer drug. For I know exactly who you're talking about, Carol Colvin. She's yep. amazing. Yeah, so she won amazing. last year our STEM category. Oh, really? Yep. I love it. I love it. Yep. See, and that's community. That's what community does. So you've just concluded last night was when yep. they, the shut off, and I have every year said I'm going to do it. But but don't it's... worry. We, we haven't forgotten about you. I so much is. work. I know. I know. It's just I like know. I look at. I've looked at it and I go. Yeah. Oh. You just have to be ready for it. You know, yeah. you don't it's just to the time. Say, oh, you need to do it now. Like, yeah. Everybody should do it when they're ready. You know, Kim and I were talking beforehand, and she said it is a lot of work. You know, but she has thought about telling her story for a while and how to do that. And you know, we're a perfect vehicle for that. 
but we make it teachable. We use case study principles so that people are um, in groups, whether it's a book club or the boardroom or a classroom, are going through discussion questions and learning about your story. So there's empathy, which we like. Oh, that's so terrible. And you know, but then we get to move on to solutions, which is what we need and what we need to walk out. So I always like to say one third whining, two thirds solutions. Okay, I like that one third whining. That should be life anyway. So, so when will you open up Hot Mamas for next year? Oh, it's open. It's, so yeah, you can yeah. just start it's now. Us. Yeah, but oh. everybody who writes their story now would be entered in the 2012 competition. Okay. And uh, we have May 4th is going to be our awards ceremony. Um, which is open to everybody. We always have great speakers. It's really inspiring. You get to hear the stories of other women. And we have literally everybody from a dropout who was a burn victim and is telling her story all the way up to a princess. We seriously, we have a princess who has written her case study for us. This I year. guess being a princess is work. I mean, yeah. think about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I'm the, I'm at the kitchen table the other day, you know, and we'd just gotten off a Disney cruise, and I'm like, Mommy's emailing a princess. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know what's so awesome is that it is a digital democracy. I mean, these are... Women. I like that. We live in a digital yeah, democracy. Digital, All things equal. It's really true. It's digital female role models. So there is no limit on the... Uh, distributable nature of these case studies. So you can tell your story once and have it told over and over and over again. And the data from your case may support a new exercise in our seminars, which we know measurably increase self-efficacy, right, and self-confidence. So it, it's just this whole virtuous circle where everything's tied in. But it doesn't matter that it's a princess or a dropout. These women are all just women telling their story and everybody is equal and it's fascinating like the princess wrote one time and she said oh I didn't I, I got an email and it's like the automated email thanking her for submitting her case study and oh I was expecting an email from Kathy and all this and I had to write her and I had to say welcome to the digital democracy and we are all equal in this world and you are now part of this elite group that places helping women above any VIP pass I like it. And she wrote back, oh, that is beautiful. I'm going to do that at the conference in Dubai and all that. <laughs> and, you know, but somebody's got to say this stuff. And I always say that we women need to work really hard on congregating and helping each other, not just because there's so many studies to show that it will measurably increase our success level, but also because we don't have golf. That's right. You know what I mean? Well, we do, but kidding. it's not good. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. not going to, you know, Everything gets in the way when I try to play. I mean, no, yeah. it's just not going to, you know, and so I just, yeah. So I think, what do we have where we naturally congregate? You know, why is, you know, sex in the city? Why is success in the city popular? You know, Starbucks, it's that whole thing. We need this, and we can't repress it and say, oh, no, and I'm too busy. I would say that having mentors, having supporters, any gender, should be on the top three of your list for success at all times. And if you find that it's slipping and that you're making excuses, really examine that. Like why? What is the really good excuse, aside from my being in ICU, that mm -hmm. I am not doing this now? Because I'm just telling you, all the research shows those with mentors are more successful. But it's mentors in a very purposeful way. It's not like, oh, I was assigned this person to the company. Any of you who've read the Catalyst study know that you know, it can't just be willy-nilly mentoring. You pick your goal or you challenge. You figure out five areas that you need to really work on to move closer to that. And then start seating those people at the mental table over the year. That would be my one action item above even writing your own case study. You know what I mean? Because the case study will help a lot of different people. That's the pay it forward part of it. But first you need to help yourself, and it's the five people that are going to do it. I think that's so true. I think that's why success is so incredibly because yeah. every woman knows intuitively intuition yeah. that um, community is the most important thing we have and you can land in at any time we will probably only have time for like let's do two questions and then people come up and say hello we didn't really get into your personal background but you have such incredible information I just wanted to get all of your brain and get it right out here oh, okay. and get it on That's tape fine. so yeah. so we have it yes ma'am 